What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. As you can see, we've got a box here. And what's in this box is something that you guys have been waiting a long time for us to have back in stock. And that would be all of our thin blue line work for it key tags. Let's see if we can open this up real quick. One day I don't have my knife on me. Come on out. Come on, we just need one of you. There we go. Boom! The sweet work for it key tags. Work for it on one side. Get off my pinky. Thin and blue line American flag on the other side. As well as we've got more of the American flag ones back in stock. And... And more of the thin green line key tags back in stock. All of which can be found over at workforwardapparel.com. I'll put a link right there as well as down in the description. Now, in all honesty, today I didn't really plan on filming a video. Uh, I had a lot of other stuff going on, but we got a bunch of that knocked out this morning. And it just so happened last night that I was having to transfer some stuff from one computer to another and I found some old memory card to do it. And I actually happened upon a little treasure trove of pictures of my first truck and being that this whole like 10 year transformation thing has been huge all over instagram which uh our good buddy dirty max jack posted a good post the other day on how that's like a really good way to test aging of facial recognition software uh smart move guys smart move but anyways i'm not too worried about anybody doing any trying to truck show recognition so i figured today's a good day to do a video on what was my first truck i know i've talked about it from time to time I've never really posted too many pictures of it because I didn't have too many pictures and well now that I found some let's just jump right on into it. So obviously as you can see by the the Denali build behind me I'm a I'm a diesel truck guy now and believe it or not I always wanted to be a diesel truck guy but when I got my first truck uh, obviously diesel trucks cost a lot more and actually when I went to go buy my first truck they had a big one the, they had one of those big like Chevy employee discount sales going on and there was not a crew cab short bed diesel truck to be found anywhere back in 2005 in my area so I eventually settled on what was a 1500 HD as you guys can see here and a lot of people ask me about the 1500 HD saying that's did you say 1500 HD like that's that's not a thing it's either 2500 HD or 3500 HD or just 1500 and that's actually not true for, uh, I want to say 03 to 07 Classic, it might have been, the years might be a little off there, uh, Chevy actually made the 1500 HD truck, and there's a multitude of reasons as to why, I'm not 100% sure if all of them are true, but basically what they wanted to do was offer a non-HD uh, three-quarter ton truck which is what the 1500 HD was and if you guys remember they also offered at one point the 2500 non HD and that's kind of where like things got a little weird back in those years but basically a 1500 HD is a 2500 frame you only had a 6.0 gas option on it now if I remember correctly it came with a 4L 80E transmission I could be wrong on that don't quote me you could get it in the quadrasteer uh, rear end which I would love, 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 I know there's one at my gym, but I would love to find somebody that has one of the old quadrasteer trucks, which for those of you guys that don't know what that is, uh, GM actually offered a four-wheel steer truck, to which when you were going under a certain speed, the wheels would turn opposite of each other, aka if you were to turn the front wheels this way, the rear wheels would turn that way to make for sharper turning and then once you got over a certain speed, they would actually turn the same way. So say you're on a highway and you want to merge over a lane. The wheels would actually turn the same way and essentially it'd be like crab walking kind of like on a, a petty bone or a high reach forklift it's where they would actually crab walk now obviously this would be very subtle so it's not like you're going to go crazy and lose control um but i know there's a lot of issues with it being really expensive it being an expensive package uh gm not really marketing it that well but i would love to see four wheel steer trucks come back to the market and the only bed option i believe you can get was the six foot six inch bed but anyways as you guys know with all of my trucks i cannot leave them stock so I had purchased that 2005 1500 HD Silverado and within I'd say about three months I basically started undergoing a transformation with that thing and as you can see in the picture here that included a seven to nine inch Fabtech lift kit, dual Fox shocks with a dual shock hoop on each side, Fox shocks in the rear. It was sitting on 37 by 12 and a half Toyos with 20 inch Eagle alloy wheels. And for those of you guys that think I need to go polished or chrome wheels, well, I've done that look. And as you can see from the picture here, they take maintenance. And 
they start to look really bad really quick. Performance wise, obviously being a gas engine and obviously my first truck, I didn't know a whole lot. And so going into it, you know, I went with, uh, Preston's actually made me a custom exhaust for that truck. Uh, it was a cat back custom exhaust. I had a uh, AFE, I believe, cold air intake on it. And then I don't remember what tuner, I just had some off the shelf tuner, which, you know, does a little bit, but it doesn't do well, too much. I kept the stock gearing and the reason I kept the stock gearing was I was told that if you have steering wheel controls on that truck and you change the gearing, there's always going to be a light on on the dash, which sounds really weird, but we all know there's weird finicky things about these trucks. So that's really the main reason I stayed away from ever re-gearing that truck. And in all honesty, on 37s with the 6.0, the truck had plenty of power as long as I wasn't towing. It had more than I ever really needed. I was completely content with it. Obviously, it was my first truck. You know, I, I wasn't trying to build some crazy drag race truck. I just wanted something that looked good, had enough power, and was reliable. And that truck was for sure, you know, kind of checked all those boxes. And that truck was also built by the guys over at Preston's. That was kind of my first rendezvous with them. And over the years, we put a ton of stuff into that truck. You know, interior, I know a lot of you guys tell me to put a system and do a bunch of stuff audio-wise to this truck. Um, I did all that in the past. On that truck, you know, young Ryan enjoyed bumping loud music. I had two tens behind the seats. I had uh, two amps. I think one amp was 1600 watts and one was 400 watts. One drove just the speakers in the truck and then the other one drove the speakers and the subs, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And then I had um, TVs in the headrest. Obviously this truck doesn't have them, but I had the, the monitors in the headrest. And then I had in the center console, and I know I'm showing you guys all this for reference. I wish I had done videos of the truck back then, but we actually had, and Preston actually did this for my birthday at the time. They had mounted a PlayStation Slim, and it actually fit perfectly in the back portion of the armrest area. And you could fully put the armrest up and you would never know it was there. Wireless controllers, and we used to just like, you know, go out to the desert, or if you were chilling in a parking lot for a while and you had to wait for something, hop in the back seat. And we used to get down on some like MX versus ATV unleashed on the headrest. Now, obviously, that being my first truck, if you guys think I baby my trucks now, you should have seen how much I babied that truck. That truck was, at least for the first five to six years of its life, that thing was detailed constantly. Like, I I just babied the crap, but I parked 10 miles away in any parking lot. And then obviously, as it got older, uh, we started taking it off-road more. You know, I rode dirt bikes all the time back then, so obviously that truck would get me into certain areas. And, you know, we had a lot of fun with it. I wish I had a lot more video of it as well, um, of us off-roading or, you know, taking the dirt bikes out. If you guys go back, maybe I'll, I'll post a link of a video right here. You guys can see it in its natural habitat out in the dirt. But, you know, eventually about six, seven, eight years in, uh, there were some rock chips here and there, and I don't want to say I cared less about it, but you know, I started to have a lot more fun with it. Now I had that truck for 10 years, from 2005 to 2015, when I bought my 2015 Silverado. And in those 10 years, I mean, that truck was just essentially bulletproof. The only thing I ever had go wrong with it was, um, the, the water pump actually went out. Aside from having to rebuild the Fabtech lift kit quite a few times, because that thing would just end up squeaking like crazy and it drove me absolutely nuts. But it was it was an awesome truck. They put bigger brakes on the 1500 HDs from the standard 1500s. I think I did brakes on that truck once in 120,000 miles on 37s. So really the only issue I ever had with that truck was when I ended up finally buying a toy hauler. Uh, we had been going out to the desert for a long time. I had either been sleeping in the back seat of that truck um, or we'd bring out my little uh, flatbedish trailer and kind of build a little tent on there. And I went to the desert one weekend in my Rhino and ended up hitting a dip at night. You know, stock Rhino lights suck. This was, you know, back in the day before crazy light bars and all that. And ended up knocking myself out on the steering wheel. Um, got all beat up. Went back that night to camp. Obviously, you know, my buddy's keeping me awake so I don't go to sleep because I had a concussion. And... I go into the back seat of my truck to go to sleep. Well, our good buddy Chris was sleeping in the bed of my truck. He was a, a little larger back then than he is now. And uh, you know, I'm already all cramped up and my, and my back's all jacked up and hurt from being in the Rhino. And every time I was about to fall asleep, Chris would like move an inch in the bed and the whole truck would shake. 
Oh, I was miserable the whole night. So after that trip, came back and said, nope, I'm not sleeping in a truck anymore. I'm gonna go get a toy hauler. So I went out and bought a 25 foot weekend warrior. Um, the trailer was awesome, loved it, but towing it with my 1500 HD, albeit it's got the 6.0, but it's on 37s and stock gearing. It just did not enjoy going up the grade. We did it for years, but it did not enjoy it. And we'd be getting passed by semis and it was just, it wasn't fun anymore. And at that point is when I started really wanting and craving a diesel. And like I tell you guys all the time, the second you get your first diesel, you're going to be hooked. I mean, diesel one, diesel two, I'm looking for a third diesel right now. Um, I'm absolutely hooked. But in 2015, obviously the new body style Chevy trucks were coming out, the new HD trucks. I knew I wanted one, so I had to sell my truck and I actually ended up selling that truck. 10 year old truck, 120,000 miles on it, gas truck for 20 grand and I was absolutely stoked. So had that 2015 for three years, as you guys know, built it into what was at the time my favorite truck. And then obviously got hit by a drunk driver, that truck's gone and then now here we are. What is 10 years later in the sweet Denali build here and I couldn't be happier. I know we had some weird bumps along the way in this journey, but you know, life is what you make of it. You can either let it get you down or you can continue to Use that to drive yourself up higher. So for those of you that are new to the channel and don't know too much about the truck, obviously we went from a seven to nine inch lifted gas truck on 37s with 20 inch wheels to the BBB build behind me here, which is 12 inch lift, coilover conversion in the front, which rides amazing compared to a torsion lift, 40 inch wheels on 22s, the rear completely four linked air ride, completely adjustable from I'd say about a six inch lift to what we're guessing is probably a 14 to 16 inch lift in the rear. That's one way to get all the water out from under your truck after a rainstorm. And with each truck I learned you know to take details a little bit further and a little bit further and the reason i think this truck looks as good as it does is over the, all those years of learning of what details to focus on where to spend a little extra money it all came out in this build and you know i still stand back and look at this thing and i'm just amazed by how well it all came together and yeah we're still waiting on the painter on that i need to call that guy because it's been a little too long buddy so just a quick little story time video for you guys today i was more so stoked that i actually found pictures of my old truck because like i said social media wasn't a big thing back then youtube kind of was but not really so there wasn't a whole lot of you know documented anything about that truck and hopefully informed you guys a little bit about the 1500 hds for those of you that didn't know they actually existed so with that we're going to wrap up this video the truck is absolutely filthy as you can see here so we definitely need to get it detailed i believe that's happening tomorrow and then the next day we're actually going to be filming a ford which i know we don't have a lot of on the channel but this ford belongs to somebody i think a lot of you guys are going to recognize so just to make sure you don't miss those videos if you have not subscribed to my channel please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content don't forget to give this video a like aka a thumbs up don't forget to check out workforapparel.com now that we got all of the key tags back in stock and we will have hats back in stock very very soon you guys are the best catch you in the next video i'm out damn uh. yeah